Hey there and welcome back. This is technically a sequel to my last video. You can always go back to the first video if you want to see more of the process behind this painting. I went over the way that I explored different methods of translating a Joshua tree into my own style. However, in the end I just wasn't satisfied with this painting. So I literally went back to the drawing board all over again. Here are some of the practice sheets from the last video. You can check out that if you want to see more detail. And here are the sketches that I did next. In order to get more of an apples to apples comparison, I just stuck to these um, cactus hybrids that I've been drawing. And there are some more here and here. This time I took an even deeper dive into my line work and the texture of my watercolor washes, by which I mean the texture that is created when I layer my washes. When I did this, I ended up with a more typical approach to the line work and the washes. I used far less line work than I normally do. As you can see, this cactus doesn't have much of a contour line, but just has lines on the interior of the shape. The painting turned out really cute, perfectly fine, but it was really far from these two pieces, which were real milestones for me. Whenever I feel lost in the process, I come back to these to remind me of where I want to go with my art. Now this was actually just a page in a sketchbook. I did this in a cafe one night. It was really surprising for me. Uh, some of my best work actually comes to me when I get out of my house. And this was actually colored pencil and Copic markers. What I liked about this was the large amount of white that I left on the sketchbook page. I liked the pale but vibrant colors that went both inside and outside of the figure. And because they were of a fairly light value, the bold contour line work still stood out. And I also liked the um, bit of squiggly colored pencil lines. And that was something that I tried to carry over into this painting where I played around with the colored pencil even more, did more random mark making. I left a white background with some white inside of the shapes. And also there was a, a texture left inside the figure and the flowers. I like having that texture build up from subsequent washes of color. So yeah, just like with the first Joshua Tree painting, I just went hog wild doing a bunch of random sketching, trying to see what worked and what didn't. And at some point I sketched these cacti. I was trying something a little different with each one. I was thinking about how light to do each wash, um, how much colored pencil to use. The light yellow washes here looked almost white. And then it occurred to me, do I really need to color everything in? No, I don't. By this point, I had already worked out a new and more simple composition in Procreate. So I traced most of it onto this paper and had at it. By leaving the trunk white, I was able to add more contrast into the middle of the painting. This also encouraged me to completely drop the brown color and stick to a more simple and vibrant palette using coral pink and various shades of orange and green. But in the process, I made a real mess here. I like an imperfect wash, whether it goes outside of the contour lines or doesn't even reach them. So now I had to tackle the nitty gritty details here, the deets of it all. Sorry, sorry, I gotta market myself if I want people to remember my name and hire me or buy my prints. So I jumped down a deep, deep rabbit hole and did the most Lindsay thing I could do. I obsessed over the most subtle little details that no one will ever notice. Just look at this. Look at this. Over and 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 over again. I'm not going to go into detail here, but I revisited certain ideas here when it came to how to stylize the leaves of the Joshua tree. I revisited these uh, spiky, loose shapes, and I tried some more distinct 
solid shapes with closed contour lines. I played around with how I wanted to do the rocks. I'm not sure where this sketch fell into the whole timeline of this, but I was again experimenting with the loose spherical washes with colored pencil on top. I revisited that weird lumpy Joshua tree again, just seeing if I could make it work. Don't even remember what I was going for here. Here is some more clean line work. Um, experimenting with the rocks again. Here you can see how my possibly ADHD fueled perfectionism both helps and hurts me. As you can see, I also revisited my signature cactus, the prickly pear, playing around with maybe doing different colors for each paddle. Remember that confetti pattern from the last video? Well, I expanded upon that and I ended up with this kind of funky 80s aesthetic, which I really liked. Now that you have stuck it out this far, I am going to go ahead and play the footage of the painting. Then we will come back here to discuss the finished work. Here we are, the finished painting. It is cute, simple, colorful, and hopefully original. Everything I want, really. I left a lot of the white of the paper to show through. It's fun and loose. The colors go outside of the lines. And yet, the whole thing feels very clean. It feels very intentional. 
I played around with the colored pencil a lot, just like in that milestone wallflower painting. There's a lot of color and texture variation, but within a limited palette. I feel like this Joshua Tree painting compared to the first one fits much better within my style. When you look at these two paintings, they look like they're from the same artist, or at least I think so. These two don't really feel like they're from the same artist, but these two do. I could not be more pleased with this painting. I hope you like it as much as I do. Be sure to check out shop.deets.art for prints. If they're not there already, then they're coming soon. And finally, if you liked this video, please consider giving a thumbs up, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you so much. My cat is having the zoomies. Hang on. Me too. No zoomies.